All right. Well, it's great to see you, Betsy. Uh, for everyone out there, this is Betsy Hall, the founder of For Their Thoughts Foundation out in Southern California, San Diego specifically. And so been um, partners with you for quite a few years now, I guess, that you've had the Dementia Live program and um, have watched the the growth of your organization and I want to share it with others. Uh, what you're doing is amazing um, and you're just one of those visionaries who took your life circumstances and decided to do something about it, right? And um, so let's talk about that. How did For Their Thoughts, why did it start? Tell, tell me about your story. Thanks and thank you for having me, Pam. Um, so I think with any nonprofit for their thoughts started with something personal that I realized was a macro problem. My story wasn't my story. My mom was diagnosed in her fifties. I was in my early twenties with a disease called frontal temporal dementia, FTD. And unfortunately about a month after my mom started, started showing symptoms, my grandmother started showing symptoms. And so we realized very quickly that we had a genetic form, but um, we watched for five years, my mom and my grandmother both um, degrade from dementia. And it was lonely, it was isolating, all the things that a lot of caregivers say. Um, and I watched friends and family disappear. And in retrospect, I realized it wasn't because they didn't care. It was because they didn't know they weren't equipped to help. They didn't understand what was happening. They didn't know what to say to my mom or my grandmother. And so when you're uncomfortable with something, it's easier to stay away. And so um, a few years later, after my mom passed away, I started doing some fundraising. And through talking to other people in the community, I realized that my story belongs to 16 million Americans. And everybody has the same story that they either are a caregiver and isolated themselves or they don't know how to help somebody. And I realized that we're not going to get to, we're not going to get to a cure if we can't even we can't even figure out the basics. <laughs> so for their thoughts was founded to really equip both the caregiver with the resources and relief that they need and the system around them so that everybody can be a part of the community and support. <laughs> Yeah, there's no wonder why we've connected because I started with the same personal story, you know, not exactly the same, obviously, but it was a personal story that that prompted me and everything you say about the caregivers and the, you know, the dropping off our friends and family that is just so apparent and the more that happens, the more that caregiver is feeling and, and their loved one feeling more and more isolated from the connection that connections they need the most. Um, I want you to share, because this is one of your uh, bits of your amazing story, but uh, you share it on your website, um, on your video of how you received the diagnosis. Yeah. Um, so it gets me a little emotional. My mom, she was diagnosed through a letter in the mail, which just will forever blow my mind. She was given a five sentence letter for what is a terminal diagnosis. She wasn't even explained like what to do, how long she was gonna live for, what was gonna happen. It basically said, you have primary progressive aphasia, a form of FTD, um, there is no treatment. Thank you for coming to see me. Please share this news with your friends and family. Um, and to this day, I'm glad my mom never saw that letter because I just happened to get the mail that day. <laughs> um, thank, thank I, we God. were literally stranded. We had no, nowhere to go and nothing to do. <laughs> yeah. Can't even imagine uh, the, the chaos you must have been feeling at that moment. Of, um, yeah, I, um, I mean, my, that... my reaction to it was I wrote a letter uh, back to the doctor and I CC'd the Board of Ethics because I just, I didn't think it was right. I, I, if somebody gets diagnosed with cancer, they're immediately sent to palliative care and just social workers to navigate the system and what is, what the road is ahead of them. And to diagnose somebody with a terminal illness through a letter in the mail is not okay. 
It's so yeah. the 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 letter back did work in the sense that the university very quickly reacted and got care for my mom, but it shouldn't have had to go that far. No. We shouldn't have been dismissed that way to begin with. So yeah. And and unfortunately it's it's still happening today. Um and when you look at the complexity of uh dementia and other neurological illnesses. Um, those are some of the patients that need and caregivers that and families that need the most guidance mm -hmm. um, that have the least access to resources. Um, where do you start? Right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I did when my parents were diagnosed with Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. Uh, my dad with Alzheimer's and mom with Parkinson's is where do you even start? I know nothing about these diseases. Nothing. Yeah. So yeah. where do you That's start? The number one question people ask is where do I go? Where do I, where do I start? And because yeah. yeah. it's not a linear disease, no. but they need some kind of roadmap or navigation to get through it. That's yeah. right. And uh, too often our families wait until they're very, very much into the burnout stage before they reach, reach out to anybody that can help them. Um, they're burned out. They're frustrated. They're sleep deprived. They're, very, very stressed out. And if we can get those, that education before they get to that point, mm -hmm. um, what a difference it would make. And I know that that's part of the the work you're doing with For Their Thoughts is let's educate, let's make people aware of this. Let's get the tools in their hands that they need to help them with their journey, right? Yeah. So today, what's uh, for their thoughts? You've got a lot going on. So tell me, tell me what's going on. So we have two my two main programs. One is specifically for living caregivers, and the other one is for their community. So I'll start bigger picture with the community, and that is our Rethink Dementia Immersive Education, which is powered by Dementia Live, where we put families and and families and professionals. We've trained in-home caregivers. We've trained um, staff at memory facilities and uh, like the network and the friends and the family through an immersive education to experience what it's like to live with a cognitive impairment. And then we follow that with what we call the empathy session so that they can really understand what, what dementia even is, because that's like a question that so many people don't understand. And honestly, if I hadn't gone through it, I wouldn't know that answer either. And we explain what dementia is, what's going on in the brain and why someone might have these different symptoms and how it's not just memory and how it affects your senses, your personality, et cetera. And, um, and then we empower them with communication skills of how you can wherever you are in the picture, if you're a professional or if you are the direct caregiver or if you are maybe a long distance relative or a friend, how you can have quality time with that person. And really that's what everything we do comes down to is that quality time. And so they are equipped with those that toolkit of empathy and understanding. And then our second program is equipping the caregivers directly, it's called Care for the Caregivers Relief Program. And we under that involves a roadmap of care navigation resources and a financial grant, uh, no strings attached for living caregivers. Because like you said, the biggest question is like, where do I go? And so we try to take that burden off of them and understand where they are in the caregiving process, what resources they may or may not even know about, and then come back with them with suggestion, hey, here's the top three things for you to do, but also here's a booklet of all these other resources because we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We want to partner with resources that are already out there and we want just to connect families with those resources. And so that way, again, they can focus on quality time with their family or their loved one because now they have the community that they need maybe some of the financial assistance that they need um, and the, they have the communication skills needed. So, yeah. yeah, I used to, I used to, uh, when I did caregiver education um, and worked directly with families earlier in my career, uh, I used to say, let's take care of the nuts and bolts, right? The yeah. things that you can take care of and check off the box, like 
the, you know, understanding finances, understanding, you know, what it's like, what you need to do to be a, a proficient as a healthcare advocate. You know, what does that mean? You, a lot of things that you can learn um, because I used to describe it as if you, if you take care of the nuts and bolts, then you're leaving room for all the emotional roller coaster that you're going to, you're going to encounter. Um, but you can take some of the other things off and say, you know what, I have, I have checked those things off the box and they're done. I can leave room for the emotional journey that's ahead of me. That is huge. Yeah. So yeah. No, I think what you said is perfect. And I actually I might steal that because what I've been saying is really what we do is while the left hand is applying pressure and stopping in applying triage, and that is the nuts and bolts, like help the families now figure out what to do, where to go. And that is our, okay, let's apply pressure. Let's stop the triage and then build the foundation with the immersive education. So they have the tools for a better tomorrow, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. So. Great way to explain it. And yeah. uh, certainly use nuts and bolts. Yeah, yeah. I like that. It sounds better than triage too. So. No, I, I kind of like both of them. So um, let me, let me, um, one, one of the conversations of the many that we've had um, in this last year, you shared that you felt like Dementia Live was a powerful gateway to an impactful conversation. Was that right? Was that the yes. right? Okay. It really is. It's the gateway um, to exactly that, to an impactful conversation. Dementia Live means you're paying attention because now you're emotionally connected. We've all sat in classes or, you know, we've all been required to maybe do an online training where you're, you're figuring out how to click through the slides faster. <laughs> yeah. So, but what the, what the experience does is you're walking in the shoes of somebody with cognitive impairment. So it is, it's the gateway. And then once that gateway in your, now you have everybody's attention, you can adjust the empathy session based on the audience and like what that focus is. Like if brain health is really, really what we need to talk about, then we can talk about brain health. If, you know, FTD is what we need to talk about, that was what we can talk about because the experience is the gateway into a powerful and effective conversation so yeah I love that I love that explanation that you gave me and, and I think to add on to that is our goal when we train uh, coaches like you on Dementia Live is everyone should leave that empowerment or empathy session that you call it with with being transformed in some way number one but tools, like mm -hmm. our goal is leave with tools. Don't leave them with half the information or, or half of what they need. Don't leave them just with that aha moment of what they've gone through, uh, follow through with that. And that, you know, and so that they leave and they think, oh, wow, I not only learned mm -hmm. and, you know, grew my level of empathy and understanding and compassion and all those important things, but now I left with communication skills that I can yeah. put into practice tomorrow or yeah. tonight when I see my loved one. And um, so you came up with a great creative idea called a happy hour. So talk about that because you've done a few and it's been yeah. very uh, effective. So we've been doing monthly happy hours. It's on the third Tuesday of the month. Um, and it's a great, it's open to the community. Anybody can come. Uh, they register via an Eventbrite so that that way we know how many people are coming. Yeah. And on it, I think what's so wonderful about it is we have anywhere between five and 15 folks. So it's not a huge, huge amount, but it's an, but it's an intimate moment where we do introductions first. So everybody kind of understands why they are, why they're there and kind of who they are relative to dementia um there's some beer and wine and snacks involved so everybody's a little bit you know a little more talkative and social and then we put them through the immersive education and or sorry the immersive experience and followed by the empathy session and by doing it with a happy hour I have to cut it off every time because everybody connects with each other and that's one of the things I love about Dementia Live is that 
five people go through this together. And so they feel connected with everybody else. And they talk about, well, I thought you knew what you were doing. And I thought I was the only one who felt lost in that room. And it's the next person's like, no, I was lost too. And so it's like, they lift each other up in, in many ways. And yeah, it just ends up being a very powerful way um, to teach the class. So, and everybody that's there wants to be there because they signed up for free. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, um, hats off for the creative thinking on that. You know, it's working and it's getting the word out on for their thoughts. It's it's providing the awareness piece, the education piece, and connecting not only you with other people, but people with each other, like you said, that can form relationships. And that's what we need to be doing is connecting people with each other who are going through the same journey, right? I mean, yeah. how powerful yeah. is that? Exactly. And I mean, even with the happy hour, it's been funny that um, when I ask, you know, hey, how do you find out about us? Now, almost every session, it's because my friend, mother, you know, insert name was here last month. And they said that I need to go to this. And That's so, <laughs> you know, we're helping more of the community. We had people from San Francisco fly down for the last one because they had local friends here in San Diego that was like, oh, my God, you need to come and experience this. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So well, cool. it's not been without a ton of passion and work on your part in growing the organization. And I know you have um, not just, you know, the growth that you're seeing in Southern California with for their thoughts, but you have connections nationally now with people who are, that's so exciting. You know, if you want to share and talk about that, um, well, so our, the other program, the Care for the Caregivers Relief Program, um, does help families nationally. It's not just for San Diego. So that's helped us a lot. And, um, you know, I'm an engineer by trade. So I always say that I don't like to reinvent the wheel. And I really, really feel we're not going to get anywhere without collaboration. So For the Thoughts has made a point to be a part of the Milken Institute Dementia Care Alliance. And, you know, anytime we can join something nationally so that we are learning from others, like that's why we partnered with you. We didn't, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. You already have the perfect equipment. Um, so it, it pretty soon will be part of Dementia Friendly. And it's just teamwork makes the dream work. It's cliche, but it's completely true. And so that's our approach with For Their Thoughts is we, you know, we have a local presence, but we also have, you know, nationally, we are trying to stay as involved as we can so that we can all learn from each other. Yeah. There's a lot of work to be done. Uh, I always tell people we can all be in this together and the needs are so great. Um, we're just touching the surface, right? We, yeah, all of us with boots on the ground, um, dealing with, um, the effects of dementia on public health on families on caregivers on professional or, you know, it just, it, it's across the board. We were talking about that earlier in our conversation. And um, so thank you for the work that you're doing. And while, you know, you're, you're making positive, um, you, you know, inroads for people and helping so many people, it's because of the journey you went through. And um, it takes people to take their own circumstances and, and do the work that you're doing to make it better for others. So, so thank you. And oh, thanks thank for you. sharing about all the work that you're doing. We're going to put your, um, put your website out there and so that others can learn about it and connect with you and have a conversation when you have time. <laughs> so thank you. Big goal for 2024. <laughs> exactly. I'm making more time, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so growing your team and making more time. Those are yeah. the goals. <laughs> yeah. 